have to do the opening scene. Already finally happening. <laughs> Soon we'll start our descent. We should be on the ground at about 10 minutes before the hour. And we've caught up a little bit from our initial delay. Sorry about that, but we've caught up as much as we could. The weather in London is very nice with the uh, clear skies and light winds. The temperature is 17 degrees centigrade, about 66 Fahrenheit. We thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed your fun. Say hello. <laughs> We're at the Royal Horse Guards Hotel now. Down near St. Paul's, here comes a double-decker bus. Yeah, we got that. Scott's looking for a place to eat. And Russ and I are standing across the street from St. Paul's right now. There's the dome in the front of it. The streets are very narrow. Super traffic and crowded. And here's Scott. <laughs> done here we'll get one of these boats to go back 
There we are, Tower of London. Russ is taking some photos of London Bridge. It isn't falling down though, it's still upright. <laughs> Here we're going into the Tower of London. Scott's out ahead of us here. There's the inner wall. So you see where that come in? Yep, now I'm here. We're kind of walking through everything. Turn it around. We're headed for the Yeoman Warder Tour. There's the White Tower. Much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Headed to see the crown jewels now. Maybe they'll lend us some. There we are going into the White Tower. 204 steps to the uh, total. been a long day so far enjoying this though <laughs> we are in the hall of armor we have here the armor of William the Conqueror Second. All the different armors. Here's Charles the second. Starting for the uh, tours. <laughs> here he was. And Scott over there. More armor.
Otherwise, I guess known as the rack. Yeah. Here we are in Portsmouth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's Saturday, it must be Portsmouth. Yes, <laughs> yeah, with Suzanne, our guide. Tickets. So, And here we go. So, we're doing a nice gentle pace today. Um, I, I saw on the itinerary that suggested that one of the things that we can charge to do is yeah, we've come down to Portsmouth now and we're going to walk around and see victory and things like that. Here we are historic Portsmouth Dockyard.
There's the Prince of Wales an aircraft carrier. Happened to break down and it's moored here, so it's towed in and moored in Portsmouth here. This is the naval yard, the actual naval yard. We're headed for the Mary Rose. Yes, yeah, it's a really major. So I'm looking at all the. It's Ed Henry VIII's flagship. Hmm. That's a new thing, the, that big cover over the top. I see. So, uh, people used to say, oh, there's a sort of myth that it was sunk on its maiden voyage, but it wasn't because it was actually launched, or it, its keel was laid in 1509, so it had been an active warship for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it sunk in the Solent, that's a piece of water just outside Portsmouth between us and the Isle of Wight. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a big French fleet, over 200 vessels came to attack Portsmouth and wanted to land on the mainland, but they were repelled. Mm -hmm. But the Mary Rose sank not as a result of enemy action. It's believed that she had all her gun ports open. There was a gust of wind and the gun ports were quite low to the waterline. Mm -hmm. So as she turned, a gust of wind tipped her slightly because she was lining up to, mm -hmm. to fire at the invading fleet and water came into the gun ports and then once that happens right, she started to roll mm -hmm. yeah. and there huh. were over 500 crew on board uh, only about 30 survived oh my. because what they had done before they went into battle they had put netting up over the top deck over the deck to stop people wow. boarding and getting mm -hmm. in and that prevented a lot of sailors from escaping from as, as it rolled over. Hmm. Um, over the centuries, uh, the, the, the wreck snagged fishing lines or sort of fishing nets in the Solent, and people thought there's something down there. And in the mid 18th, I think the 1830s, uh, a couple of sort of amateur divers, because diving wasn't exactly a sort of modern science we have today, very rudimentary equipment people had. They went down and found a gun, and it was engraved Henricus VIII in, in, in sort of Latin. So they mm. said that's a Henry VIII gun. They, they found out that much, but the, there wasn't enough money for them to do any further work on it. And it wasn't until really the 1970s that archaeolo uh, sort of marine archaeologists really got interested um, in the site. Um, and the Mary Rose Trust was formed and there were thousands upon thousands of dives on the wreck mm -hmm. with specialist equipment and eventually in 1982 the 11th of october they raised it from the seabed mm -hmm. and it had been really well -received. here's what we can see the mary rose what was left from 1545 when it sank and some of the artifacts that the cannon at the ports that was recovered. <laughs> there is an archer on the Mary Rose, the longbows. case of them. We're going aboard HMS Victory Nelson's flagship at Trafalgar. They're doing a lot of restoration work on it. You can see all the scaffolding. Very low doorway. I feel very tall in here. <laughs> There they got the gun deck. This ship was actually that there's a lot of synergy between the life of Nelson and of mm -hmm. the ship. Here we are on the Victory. This is the bow of it. It's 
see all the scaffolding where the reconstruction is being, the reconditioning is being taken care of. Victory was the biggest ship at the time in the Royal Navy. There's the, the mast, huge mast. Yeah, it's been interesting so far. There's a gun port and another lower gun deck. There are swords and pistols for the Marines based on this ship. There were over a hundred guns on the ship. It's copper lined, you'll see it as we go out. I'm assuming it's the same layout because they've got all these repairs going on. But um, it's copper lined because copper doesn't spark. Okay. So they've got lanterns down there to light it, but they're all sealed. Mm. Because obviously they had, right. a lot more headroom here than right. there is in the, the say the Constitution. Right. Much taller. Right. Over there is the Prince of Wales. It's in for repairs. In this area it was started, and King John in 1212 ordered a wall to be a defensive wall to be built and then gradually one of the cabins. There's the sleeping quarters. It's hard to see. These are the hammocks stacked one on top of the other. On a gun deck. There were heard toward the M33. That was used in the Gallipoli campaign in World War One. Everybody's gotten ahead of me. Two six inch guns, which is pretty big for a ship this size. On the River Lee, commissioned in 1860. It was built on an 18-inch thick Burma teak frame that aft that they bought the big iron plates onto. The ship was steam-powered as well as sail. In its day, considered to be so formidable, nobody wanted to go anywhere near it, it never even got to fire a shot in anger. It was the pride of Queen Victoria's fleet. It was head of the Red Fleet back in the day when Britain had three fleets. The red, the white, and the blue. HMS Warrior was built by a company called the Thames Iron Works. They had their own little football team, which over the years becomes West Ham. This is why their nickname is the Hammers or the Irons, because of the Thames Iron Works. Remember, keep looking over the side of the Warrior is. Everything you can look at is both on the right hand side or on a boat or a ship. The right hand side is the starboard side.
going to be bringing her back in. You know that she um she got like problems. She um a shaft coupling, so this huge coupling on one of her props she exploded, literally disintegrated. So uh, she's anchored up outside. She was heading to America. She hadn't got very far when this happened. So they're going to bring her back in just under tugboat. So a little bit. They're just waiting for the tide. We're coming up to high tide in a couple of hours. As she ties up here, Victory Jetty, there's HMS Victory. Now, just in case you don't know about Victory, she's well over halfway through. It's about 13 years into a 20 year long restoration project. Now, this is phase two. They've covered her in scaffold. They are going to take, it will take four to six years, they're going to strip every single outside timber off that ship right down to the main frame and replace it. Fantastic. Okay, here's Queen Elizabeth. She goes out a week tomorrow. She goes round the bed. That's where they're lifting. Last week, the last few months, the top of the ship looked like a building site. There were bits of kit and everywhere. They've resealed all the runways with a heat reflecting system. And now they're uh, giving her a good tidy up prior to her leaving next Sunday. She goes to the Mediterranean. Now first of the QEC or Queen Elizabeth class carriers are 65,000 tons. These are the largest vessels ever built for the Navy. They were mostly built in Ross site. 280 meters long, 39 meters wide at the waterline, 70 meters wide up on the top. A full quota of eight. And folks, over to the right, those massive sheds that read HM Naval Base Portsmouth used to be the site of BAE systems. Sadly, we don't build ships here anymore but we do have the contract for the maintenance. That's why that destroyer, HMS Dragon, over there. Good view from here of Spinnaker Tower. 170 meters or 560 foot tall. As they were building it for the Millennium, they wanted to call it the Millennium Tower. Only from day one of its construction, that always seem to be problem after problem, setback after setback. It's eventually completed in 2004, so they call it Spinnaker Tower, as it's supposed to look like a Spinnaker sail. The estimated build cost was six to eight million pounds. Four years behind schedule, it rockets to 34 million. On a very clear day, they say from these platforms, you can see 20 three miles more of continuous coastline from. In a cafeteria at Portsmouth Dockyard, they've got a bizarre collection of games. There's the Miser Dream and an old crane and a working model of the guillotine inside the gate. Another one. There's a sailor. Got this. And Happy Jack. Right out of Stephen King. 